Wonderful sound, isn't it? Hear that sound? Well, it's early in the morning. See, this is something that I'm gonna uh, address real quick. You come out and you start homesteading. You got this beautiful picture of how it's gonna be living off the land. And you're gonna start out with chickens. Everybody starts out with chickens. And then you realize you're gonna you're gonna breed them and grow your own, and that's wonderful. Then you realize 50 percent, well, like in my case, 60 percent of them are gonna be 60 percent of them are gonna be roosters. That's just my luck. But anyway, you are gonna end up with uh, having to get them to this point. This right here is a smoked rooster that I had. You know, they even got a few feathers still on them, but that's all right. That's just the way it is. But this is smoked. And you're also going to come to the realization, even in the... Bags, I just usually use those bags and put them in there because I'm going to use this chicken pretty fast. But, uh... You're going to come to the realization that those chickens don't even taste the same. <laughs> you think you're going to put them in the oven or cook them some way like you traditionally cook chicken. And all of a sudden you're going to be like, this don't taste anything like I know chicken to taste. Because it doesn't. And the way here in the south, especially here in Louisiana, the way they used to handle that kind of stuff was to uh, make dishes that to the flavor and what it used to be you used to go get a yard bird clean it that day and uh we'd make something like gumbo so i'm gonna show you how to do that i got a chicken that i use right here i use some venison sausage that i made out of some deer i'm gonna use some regular traditional smoke sausage that I bought too I just like to have some of that but I mean we just use it but this is where the flavor really comes from this smoke sausage and this smoked chicken that's where the flavor is going to come from and I'm going to use some I got some fresh oyster mushrooms I'm going to use so hang on I'm going to show you how to cook a Louisiana gumbo chicken and basically on Dewey gumbo, but this is chicken smoked sausage gumbo out of a, a deer sausage out of some home smoked sausage out of some homegrown chicken smoked tea on the property and some wild picked mushroom oysters oyster mushroom mushroom oysters oyster mushrooms and uh I'll let y'all see. All right, on to cooking. I need a little green onion. Oh, I'm gonna pick this nice big one right here. Yeah, cut it off nice and flush. This is gonna be a chicken on Dewey, well, chicken and smoked sausage, but that's what I made is on Dewey. That's my smoked sausage. It's basically the same thing as what on Dewey is. But you can call it sausage, smoked sausage. This is some generic smoked sausage from the store. But I'm going to put that in there just to add a little. This, mine adds the flavor because it has the smoke, the real traditional smoke because I smoked it myself. You want to see that video where I smoked the sausage? It's a real good watch. It's a long, long video, but it from start to finish, it's the uh, making venison smoked sausage. I'm gonna add uh, this traditional smoked sausage, the traditional venison smoked sausage that I make. Some of the chicken that I'm putting in here, this is a smoked chicken that I made from my own chickens. This is some store-bought chickens, and this is some jawed chicken that I made, and it's from 72716 dark meat, dark meat chicken. So, that's almost four years old, jawed. 
And then uh, I'm gonna add some oyster mushrooms to this. These are some mushrooms I picked the other day. Very pretty mushrooms. I had them frozen, so I'm gonna thaw them out and that's gonna go in the gumbo too. So these are all the ingredients that's gonna go in. Generally, generally I would put uh, my own tomatoes in here and I do have some, but these are getting kind of old. So um, go ahead and put some canned tomatoes in it. Some people don't add that, but I do. And I have some jarred ones, but I'm kind of saving those for something else. And um, hopefully I'll get some more jarred tomatoes this year. This is just regular diced tomatoes. So catch back up with y'all in a little bit. Deboned, and I'm going to cut it up into pieces. Put it aside. And then start the room. Gonna do the chopped seasonings now.
All right, that's the sausage and the chickens underneath there. Chop seasoning. And uh, last thing I gotta do to get everything ready to just rock and roll with this is uh, get the mushrooms cut. All right, these are some oyster mushrooms I picked not too long ago. They never look as good when you pull them out of the freezer. This one actually had a stalk on it, but most of them don't. They're still a little bit frozen. But uh, I picked these just a couple weeks ago, actually. And uh, I got them when I was deer hunting. So get those out and cut them up and get them ready. Man, if I could describe the smell of these. Mm. Such an earthy, just, it's a very unique smell. It's so good. Oh my God. You, you, it's the aromatics of a fresh, or, you know, these are frozen, but they're pretty fresh. And if you see the gills on them, they're pretty definitive of what a uh, oyster mushroom is. You can't miss that. That's that's how the oyster mushroom gills look. It's pretty pretty definitive. Those right there. It's very fleshy, meaty. When the stalks, when they do have stalks, very, very texturous, fibrous, but good. They cook down well. Let's see. When after frozen, it, it, it's just not, not quite the same. But they're, they're, they're just as delicious, but. Beautiful mushrooms. And that's how they look on the top. A little bit darker now after thawed out. So, beautiful mushrooms. I'm gonna chop them up a little bit more than that, especially some of these stalk pieces. But, uh, oh my God, that is, you can't beat these mushrooms. There's no mushrooms on the planet that taste as good as these. Said I was gonna put some jarred chicken in there. I think I got enough chicken and sausage right here. So I think I'm gonna save that for later. But uh I'm gonna go ahead and get the roux cooking. So a roux just like in the uh sauce pecone video. Go ahead and take a little bit of cooking oil. Put it in there. That should be enough. Kind of hard to do when I'm, when I'm gonna take some flour. That should be enough. Put it in there. That's close proportions to what it should be. Go ahead. 
take this and stir it up. I haven't got any heat on right now. I just want to see what the consistency is going to look like. Oh yeah, I'm going to need a little bit more flour. You could cook it like that, but a little bit more flour is necessary. Well, not necessary, but... Okay. So, yeah, that looks right. A little thick. I mean, if you go under or over a little bit, you're not going to ruin it. That's for sure. So... Beautiful looking consistency of oil and flour. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the... I, I put it on a... It's, a, it's in the high range, but it's going to take a while to get up the temperature and then... Just like any other roux, you can walk away from it a little bit at the beginning. Once it starts cooking, you cannot walk away from this. The roux is the most important part to watch when you're cooking like this. And uh, if you if you mess up on this, this is the the whole dish is messed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir this. The last time I cooked roux, we wanted dark chocolate. This time, I just want chocolate. Uh, gumbo takes what's considered a chocolate roux. A dark roux, but it's not dark chocolate roux, like a sauce pecan. So, we'll go past the blonde and the uh, darker blonde, and then we'll get to the chocolate. So, I'll pick up from over there when I get that. You just got to keep stirring this roux. I can let it sit for a little while while it's heating up, but once it heats up, you can't let it sit. See, it's starting to bubble, so it's becoming very imperative that I stay here. So I'm going to come get the... Yeah. You know, a roux is it's quite unique. It's a unique thing. It the smell is so intoxicating. It's very a roux is so good. It's very delicious smelling. But if you tried to eat this by itself, it's terrible. It is horrible flavor. But when you add it to the dish, it's the most essential part of it. It's incredible what the flavor is when you add, when you put a roux in. And there's different ways to add it. You can make the roux itself, then saute the seasoning. Or you can make the roux, like I'm going to do here, and then saute the seasoning directly in the roux. It's, it, there's different ways to do this different times to add a roux and one of these days I'm gonna show y'all a, a turtle soup and that's made with a butter roux that's dark and you add the seasonings after you add the seasonings to oil and then you add the roux later on in the dish it's just and you can do that with a gumbo you can add the roux later you can saute the seasonings after you uh, you make the roux, put it aside, saute the seasonings, get everything browned, and then you can uh, add the roux after. There's so many ways to do this. So many ways to cook. But the end result is always so good. I tell you what, I can smell those mushrooms all throughout this kitchen, and it is so delicious smelling. Everything's so good. Come back to y'all when it gets a little bit more done. Alright, we way past the blonde room. We in the beige area. But it still hasn't darkened up enough. So this is a point where you really want to 
keep stirring. I got the heat up a little too high. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Because it's rolling. It's going fast. You can do it fast. You just got to... I sent a video and it's... <laughs> I really wanna I really wanna do this right. So I'm gonna low it down a little bit and it's gonna you still can't walk away from it. But it's getting close to that chocolate color. The uh had a dark color right now, but it's a darker color, but it ain't quite there yet. So I'm come back to you when it's done. Alright, it's close to chocolate. It's real close. I think I'm going to go a little bit darker on this one. But it's going fast. I think I got that heat up high, so I got to do it quick. It's okay to do it on a higher heat. You can lower it and go slower. I'm going to go ahead and... about a chocolate color there. I want to go a little bit darker. Oops. I can't, uh, I'm going to have to uh, dump the seasonings in it and then I'm going to pick the camera back up. It's, it's there. Okay. I think that's dark enough. In there. Woo. A lot of steam coming off of those seasoning, chopped seasoning. See how it's darkening it up? That's what it does. That scrapes that bottom. Woo. Woo. Boy, that's a good smell, eh? Mmm, man, that's some good smell. Whew, unbelievable. I can't tell you, I, I wish I could, uh, I wish I could let you smell that. That is unbelievably good. See, it darkened up, but it will happen when I add the uh, meat. What I'm going to do first, though, I'll go ahead and add these tomato sets. It's a little early for me. I usually do that later, but I'm going to do it early this time. So you can do everything at different times. Now you don't, some people don't put any tomatoes at all in there, but I like it. put the sausage and the chicken in a lot it's a lot I'm glad I didn't put the other mix in that's a lot gonna brown the meat and then that smoked chicken I put in there that was one of my chickens that I one of my old chickens I, it was a rooster that I you know I had to get rid of and it was 
too many roosters. I think it was about 20, 20 weeks old. 20, 22, 23, 24 weeks old. Somewhere up in there. Some venison sausage. And then some regular sausage from the in the store. I'm gonna cook that down and brown that and turn that in there. Usually I'd be holding this with a pot holder so it didn't move but I'm holding the camera. <laughs> Trying to get some of that stuff off the bottom. Good stuff there, man. There's some good smells going on in here. People do this during the winter time because it's pretty cool in the house. I got the the got the uh, heat on, but it's this way up, so it ain't gonna turn on. But this will heat your kitchen up a little bit. Or I can't believe my northern brethren don't don't do this. Y'all need to start doing this up north. Y'all really do. This is cooking on a scale that y'all really need to open y'all palates up because it really you know a gumbo like this uplifts the spirits. So good. Okay, everything's been pretty much brown. Chicken is brown and it's I had put a little fresh chicken in addition to the smoked. So I'm gonna go ahead and mm. some just regular water some good looking gumbo I'm gonna add some I'm gonna go ahead and get some more water this is more of a soupy dish unlike that sauce the car I had cooked this is more soupy so I'm gonna add pretty fair amount of water Some people like more stuff, some people like the juice. My daughter and my wife like the juice. So, I'm gonna go ahead and look at that. Look at that real, when you pull it away. That's, oh, that, that's the good color. Now what I'm gonna do, I'll go ahead and grab some seasonings from up here. This is some garlic powder. We'll put a little garlic powder in there. Ain't nothing wrong with that, huh? And then I'm gonna put a little... little onion powder. Oop, that's plenty enough. Put a little... 
red cayenne pepper in there. Plenty enough. And then I'm going to put a little black pepper. Ain't nothing wrong with that. A little bit, not too much. And then I'm going uh, to come into the refrigerator. Get out some Louisiana hot sauce. And uh, three dashes of that. And two or three. Four or five. It's okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh, maybe I'm gonna, you know, I don't always do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and, whew, all that seasons. Two dashes of Worcestershire sauce to it. You don't have to add any of this stuff if you don't want to. But I'm gonna go ahead and add it. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this. gumbo. Then you just let it simmer and cook until everybody's home and ready to eat. And that's going to be about another two or three hours. I'll add some water to it. When it, as it cooks out. But that's it. That's gumbo. Hope y'all enjoyed that. But oh, there's one thing you gotta do. Make some rice. And I use old. I could cook rice on the stove, but I'm gonna use the old rice cooker. Why not? It makes it a little bit easier. Now. Making rice is not so hard. What I'm gonna do, it's about that time, before I go get the rice, is I'm gonna go ahead and put the mushrooms in there. Last ingredient. Every little bit of that mushroom is good, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. So everything that's in there, Mm -hmm. Oh my God, if y'all could smell that. I'm gonna go ahead and go get some rice outside. I keep Take a cup. Get a cup of rice. How about two. Alright, that's about two cups of rice. And on this uh, rice plate that I pass, where you put two or three cups, but the way I do it, Basmati rice. I like basmati rice better. So you kind of get it to all get wet. I put two, I'm going to put it up to about the three cup measurement. A little bit, a little bit more than what they would say to do. Do is I'm gonna take uh, a little bit of olive oil. We'll just pour a dollop in there. Just see it floating on the top. And uh, the thing I'm gonna do. 
do. Take some salt. Put a little salt in there. Not much, just a little bit. Put the top on. And you start it. That's it. Race is done. It will, it will be done. upside down all right this is how it looks I just took the cover off been a few hours and uh flavors mm. they just wash over your tongue oh. it's so good it's, it's. Mm. I can't I can't describe it just a uh, very strong flavor, soupy, yummy, strong smoke, spices, mmm, there's so much flavor in that. I can't even begin to describe it. Meat and seasonings. This it's just wonderful. Mm. It's gumbo. But that's gumbo. Now you could, there's so many different ways to do this. You could put a little crab in there. 
you can put a little shrimps you can put some shrimps in there and that'll be that'll be wonderful ain't no problem with that some people like to just call it chicken andouille gumbo it's basically chicken and andouille sausage that's what the kind of sausage I make is basically andouille and uh it's a it's a pork and venison deer meat sausage and wild oyster mushrooms oh my god you can't beat that that's one right there you see it with there's one right there that that oyster mushroom is great in there but you could do this with button mushrooms and it will the flavor doesn't change it's a little bit different texture and stuff like that but oh I, I can't even begin to describe the flavor to you I mean like a, a wine sommelier can describe a wine to people I'll try it's the perfect texture of meat to chew with a smoky robust seasoned spice seasoned and It just really awakens all the sense. It's so good. I can't even begin to tell you. But just go ahead. And if you do what I just did, if if you do what I showed you, I promise you. You see the consistency. That's what you want. I'm going to add a little bit more water just to bring it up. But it really doesn't need any more. Maybe I won't. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's incredible good. Look at that. Just incredible goodness all up in there. Cook this at your deer camp. You cook this at your house for your family. Oh, my God. Look at that, Look at that beautiful oyster mushroom in there. Wild picked just the other day. And it don't matter if it's wild pig. You can grow them in your house. I'm growing a few oyster mushrooms here. Look at that. I'm growing some. So, either way, nice smoky flavor. The more smoke you have, if you have a smokehouse and you can make your own smoked sausage, all the better it does make it better and I put a smoked chicken in there one of my chickens that I I raised <sighs> but even if you just got chicken from the store it's gonna be good I promise you you do have to have some kind of smoked sausage or something in there to get that smoky flavor but if you got a smokehouse and you can do it in your own wow anyway i'm getting ready to make some devil food eggs my wife wants that instead of potato salad so i'm gonna go ahead and take care of that and knock that out but authentic louisiana gumbo that's it that's what it is oh i wish i could i wish i could give everyone who sees this a taste of it it's so good something good. Alright y'all. Thanks for watching. Take care.